Hi everyone, my name is Dee and welcome to Books and Quirks. Welcome to Friday Reads on a Thursday. <laughs> when this goes up tomorrow, I'm actually going to be at Comic-Con. So I wanted to do this early because I will still be able to get a little bit of reading done this weekend, but mostly on Sunday. I will be at Comic-Con all day on Friday and I will be at Comic-Con all day on Saturday. And if any of you have ever been to Comic-Con, you know that it's an all day and into the nighttime events. You know, there's just so many things going on in New York City. So yeah, I'm very excited. This is my first time going. My friend and I decided to give each other, you know, this is sort of our birthday gifts to ourselves um, since we've always wanted to go. Both our birthdays are in October, so I figured, why not? And well, we're going together, so it should be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about it, and hopefully I don't get killed in the mob scene that I know happens at Comic-Con. So this will be a wrap-up slash Friday Reads, because I will only be reading two books um, this weekend since... I don't have a lot of time. Um, but to wrap up, the first book that I finished this weekend was The Girl in 6E. This is by A.R. Tor, And this was really good. I actually really love this book. I don't know how to explain it without giving away any spoilers, but it's, it's sort of, um, it's a thriller, but with very disturbing themes in it. You know, it follows this young girl who never leaves her apartment. Um, and you don't know why at the beginning she can't leave her apartment. You just know that she orders everything in that she needs for her life. <laughs> um, she locks her door. She doesn't let anybody in. She doesn't ever leave. And she um, makes her living by being sort of, I don't, I wouldn't call it, I guess it's porn in a way, but it's more like she, she fulfills men's fantasies. Um, <laughs> I, you know, in the first hundred pages of this book, I wasn't even sure if I was going to like it. I wasn't even sure what I was reading. It, some of the things were just so disturbing, but, um, but by the end, I really love this. I I really don't even know how to describe it, but I really recommend, recommend it. It's such a good read. And despite how disturbing you might think it is at the beginning, it really um, explains itself and turns it, itself around um, in the end. But it says on the back, you know, she follows three rules. Don't ever leave the apartment, never let anyone in, and don't kill anyone. So, um, I really enjoyed it. I'll, I'll put a better description on Goodreads because I really don't know how to explain it without spoiling it. Um, but that is one book I finished this week. The next book that I finished this week was Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King. This is part of my October TBR. I was really happy I finally got around to this. This follows a detective, Bill Hodges, and a killer, Mr. Mercedes. Um, in the first chapter of the book, Mr. Mercedes, as he's known later on, um, there's a man who takes his gray, takes a gray Mercedes to this um, area where people are packed in line early in the morning to get ready for a job fair that's happening. You know, in this town, a lot of people are down on their luck. A lot of people don't have jobs. So people are really packed in and waiting online for the doors to open for this job fair. And some of the people have been waiting all night, um, just, you know, slept outside all night just to have a chance at a job. And, um, all of a sudden, a gray Mercedes plows into the crowd and kills a bunch of people. And then it fast forwards and Bill Hodges is now a retired detective. And he has always been haunted by this crime because he has never been able, able to solve it. And 
you know, it goes from there. And it's really a good book. It's a far cry from anything else Stephen King has ever made. Um, it doesn't have any paranormal aspects to it. It doesn't have any real weirdness except the fact that there's a serial killer in here. And you get both points of view, which is really nice. You get the serial killer's point of view and you get Bill Hodges' point of view. And I found Bill Hodges to be such a lovable character. I really... I really liked him and I really was rooting for him and I don't know he was just a good good man and you know I was really turning the pages especially the last hundred pages because you know I was just so antsy about you know what would happen and this is the first book in a trilogy so the other books I think follow other cases I'm not sure if it follows the same case um, but I think it follows other cases. I'm not sure, but I'll let you know once I read the second book, which is Finders Keepers. Okay. So those were the two books that I finished this past week. What I'm still working on is Trigger Warnings by Neil Gaiman. I am loving this so much. And I had said that it would probably be my next couple Friday reads because it's a collection of short stories and poems by Neil Gaiman. And all of them have sort of a creepy aspect to it. I'm really loving this. I am about a third of the way through. So I'm getting through them all and I'm reading like a couple each night or at least I'm trying to and I'm really enjoying this. I absolutely think that these stories are so creepy and so perfect for October and I'm so glad Stacey Matt um, mentioned it on her channel because I would have never picked this book up or even known about it otherwise. So I won't talk about it more because I talked about it previously but really good book and I will continue to be reading that and the only other book that I started and I will be continuing on probably on Sunday when I'm not at Comic-Con anymore is Before the Fall by Noah Hawley. I saw this on Shailene's channel of Shailene Toland and it sounded really interesting. I decided to get it from the library um, since I didn't have a copy and it is about a plane crash. So there are these um, individuals that have a private jet. It's a billionaire, billionaire's jet and you know his family and some friends and this other individual. What's his name? Scott. Scott um, who is a friend of the billionaire's wife. I'll get on this private jet and the next thing you know, Scott is floating around in the ocean. And, you know, it's he and this little boy are the only ones that survive the plane crash. Or at least that's what I know so far. I'm about 50 pages in. Um, so you don't really know what happened with the plane. Um, the police are trying to figure that out. Um, you just know that he survived, the little boy survived, and I was told, although although I haven't seen it yet because I'm just at the very beginning of the book, that it goes back and forth a little bit. So you get to see about the lives of the individuals before the plane crash or before they even got on the plane, and then what's happening in the present with trying to unravel, you know, what happened with this plane, why did it go down, um... And you know what's going to happen with these with these two characters. The little boy is the son of the billionaires uh, that were on the plane, the ones that owned the the private jet. And Scott is just this regular kind of Joe. He's not rich. He's not you know anything um, I guess special. He just happens to be sort of friendly with the wife, and therefore she. And since he was going to the same kind of place, you know, she said, come along, we have a private jet, you know, you can ride along. So that is that. And I'll let you know what I think about it next week when I finish it. But that is all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all when I get back from Comic-Con. Bye.